May I have your attention, please? We are controlling transmission. There is nothing wrong. The horror crime. Whether it's a ghost, a spirit, or an entity, they all feed on it. That's the whispering, the footsteps, the feeling of another presence. You won't have a chance to change your minds later, because there'll be no way to get out. We have such sights to show you. Have you checked the children? Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Boogeyman's real. That is what I... They're coming to get you. They're here. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Horror Chronicles podcast. I am your host, Ryan, and with me, as always, my co-host and co-founder, the mastermind behind the whole thing. I don't know that I'm a mastermind by no means. Well, you do more than I do. I just Uh, come up with ideas and you make them work. (laughs) I do the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, the important shit that makes it sound good. She does all that. <laughs> Don't tell them that. They'll, now they know I'm the one that's screwing it all up. Hey, whatever, man. I got to take something off of me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So, today, we're going to get into some of our favorite, basically, horror, scary TV shows. You know, stuff yeah. that yeah. we enjoyed as a child and stuff that we enjoy now and... You know, some stuff that we don't enjoy. You know, it was really funny when we talked about doing this episode, I thought for sure we were going to go in two different directions. Yeah. And we really, <laughs> when we started comparing notes, we we have a lot of the same stuff on there. Oh, yeah, for know? sure. I mean, granted, you know, some stuff is just obvious because, I mean, that's what there was yeah, on TV. Yeah. But, you know, it's just that's tells you how important those shows were. That's all we had back in 1978. Well, that's all you had in 1978. All I had in 78 was a dream in the back of my dad's head Ooh. that came out into reality in the front of it. Never mind. What? Anyway. <laughs> Skits cat. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, yeah. But basically what I was going to say is, like, of course, some of these are going to be 100% the same because they're... Like they're, they're just very, great shows. Great shows that are very important and very right. influential shows for the horror right. world. You know what I mean, or the scary oh, yeah. world, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. But speaking of that, have you seen or did you watch? I just thought about this. Did you watch Overlord yet? I have not. I think it just came out on video though. My buddy watched it and he said that it was low budget, but it was really gory and a lot of good like scenes in it. it was I've just heard that about that. No big actors. Which is fine by me. I don't, yeah. I'm not, oh, yeah, yeah. Hellfest was good, and there was some, no big actors. Some of my favorite movies are those B-grade, yeah. you know. Well, this one he said was good. I mean, it was definitely worth watching, you know. Yeah. It yeah. just didn't have any famous actors, which I don't yeah. care. To me. I mean, uh, look at look at Evil Dead. Nobody knew who the hell Bruce Campbell was when it came out. <laughs> they sure the fuck do now. Though. Yeah, exactly. He's the man. Exactly. But, uh, but yeah. anyway. Anyway, um, I guess I'll let you start off with one if you want to go ahead. And... Okay, well, one of the shows that I remember from when I was a kid my mom used to watch this show when I was really young. Um, is uh, The show was Call Check the Night Stalker, and it ran from 1974 to 1975. Um, a cool show. Basically, the premise of the show is uh, Carl Kolchak is a reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times, and he always ends up getting himself into these like weird scenarios and like weird stories pop up you know stories about vampires and zombies and you know uh, i remember like a bigfoot type of episode and uh, just all kinds of weird stuff is what this guy would get into and it was funny because the 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 head of the newspaper was always on his ass you know and like you know quit following these stories and and he would travel around the country and do these stories and it was kind of like a uh 
oh, it was it was almost set up like a murder mystery kind of thing. You had you know you were trying to figure out what was going on. My and, Matlock. You know, I remember <laughs> I remember uh, he did a vampire one one time. He did one about a bunch of Satanists and and just cool stuff. But the the funny thing is when we when I started really looking at the show, the thing that I didn't realize is is so. The TV show, Call Check the Night Stalker, it was an hour-long TV show, and like I said, it ran from 1974 to 1975, and it starred Darren McGavin. Now, if you don't know who Darren McGavin is, Darren McGavin was the father on A Christmas Story. Awesome actor. Yeah, yeah. Awesome actor. Um, God rest his soul, he passed away a couple it's years so ago. Good but in that movie. Anyway, uh, this TV show was spawned from a movie called The Night Stalker, which starred Darren McGavin. It was basically the same thing. The t- the the movie, um, and if I if I remember right, it was a made for TV movie. It came out in 1972, and then it was followed the following year by a movie called The Night Strangler, which of course came out in 73. Well, the, both of these movies. You know, it was the same story. It was about Carl Kolchak and his escapades wow. or whatever, and uh, it spawned a TV series. And I, it just one of my one of the TV series that I remember as a kid, and I just love watching them. Well, they're still on TV. You can find them on TV Land, probably. Uh, no, I think it's actually on that Me TV, uh-huh. and they're on like really late at night. So I've recorded a few episodes, and I think you can you can get to it through. Uh, uh, you could probably watch it on YouTube. Um, I think be, it's on uh, Amazon Prime. That'd be a cool show for them to redo. It would be. It really would, you know? be. would be. I mean, a lot of stuff you don't want them to do that, but that sounds like something to yeah. be cool nowadays. It was a redo. fun show to watch. It yeah. really was. Yes. Yeah, and they made a lot of like made-for-TV movies back then. Yes. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. even it was a made-for-TV well, movie too, right? One of them. Yeah. Uh, yes, I believe. It? Yeah, it. Uh, it may have been. It was a one of my favorite, all-time favorite made-for-TV movies was uh, Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot was a an adaptation of a Stephen King novel. Yeah, and it was made. It was like a a three part miniseries or something like that that they did. Um, I remember seeing that when I was a little kid, and it came out in 1979, so I was like yeah. eight. You know. And that movie is probably what really garnered my love for horror. Um, that movie is one of the first movies that ever truly scared me. And we'll talk um, about that. Yeah, one and we'll talk about right. Salem's Lot in another episode. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. I am. Uh, you know, speaking of that and kind of like mm. speaking of remakes, I find, I was at a buddy's house last night. Uh, my buddy Kevin, I used to tell you for a while there, we were going to his house and watching horror movies all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was like, dude, I want to watch a scary movie tonight. And I was just bullshitting with him yesterday at his house. And I was telling him, talking about stuff. And he hadn't, he hadn't seen the new Cem- Pet Cemetery. Remake. I was just going to say that to you because you were talking about remakes. He didn't know. He didn't that know. That new trailer I, has, has, has done it for me. The first trailer, I was like, ah, I don't uh, know, yeah. you know. But this new trailer they just released, I, I, uh, yeah, my I God, I got to see that movie. Dude. Yeah, I showed him that one. I hadn't good. seen the, I hadn't seen the new trailer yet, and I was like, well, I haven't seen the new trailer. Let's check it out. So me and him watched it. He's like, dude, I didn't know they were making that. Yeah. He's like, that is awesome. So yeah, a little yeah. side story. I just thought I'd talk about that because it looks really good. I can't oh, wait yeah. to watch it. Um, I guess one I'll mention, you know, that uh, came out in 1983 and ran until about, ni- about 88 was Tales from the Dark Side. Oh, yeah. Which is really freaking good show, man. I mean, <laughs> the intro for that show is so creepy. Oh, dude, you yeah. Know, that that guy's voice. Uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, Paul Paul Sparser was his name. That's right. Yeah. He. Uh, I don't know. Just something about his voice in that yeah, whole there, intro. Yeah, there's uh, certain people. Like I just, um, I just got my sons um, the Goosebumps two the movie. Yeah, they love the first one. Yeah. So I got the second one, which I actually love it. It kind of reminds yeah, me of the Yeah, I thought TV. it was good. The new one, the part two, reminds me of the old, which I'll talk about in a minute, the old Goosebumps TV show. The Goosebump, yeah. But talking about voices, uh, it had the uh, the dummy on there. Um, oh, what's his name? God dang it. I just completely rewind. I was going to talk about it. Anyway, there's dummy on there, and he's got this real creepy. God, what was that dummy's name? Creepy little voice. It's freaking. It starts with an S. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, he's got a really creepy, freaking, like, yeah, yeah, like raspy, creepy voice. So, 
But uh, yeah, Tales from Dark Side was a great show. I mean, um, granted, it was only aired two more seasons after I was born, but I didn't even watch it till I was probably, I don't know, six, seven. Yeah. yeah. And then I started watching episodes. Of yeah. It. So you see, for me, um, I grew up in St. Louis, and in St. Louis, every Saturday night they did this thing called Saturday Night Shockers. And usually, what they would do on that is it would start around nine o'clock, and they would show. Uh, usually some sort of universal horror movie, you know, like uh, Dracula or The Wolfman or, you know, one of those, Frankenstein or mm-hmm. something. Um, occasionally we get like a, a <coughs> Abbott and Costello movie, which I know they're comedians, but they did a couple really cool, uh, like, scary ones. Yeah, uh, yep, yep. The, the best one they did was uh, Abbott and Costello uh, meet, uh, Frankenstein. Yes. Um, yep. And uh, it had all the people in it. It had Dracula and the Wolfman, and they were the actual universal people. So it was Bella Lugosi, oh, Lon That's Chaney, crazy. you know. Um, uh, yeah, just. Uh, and then the o- other one they did was called Hold That Ghost, where they were actually trapped in a haunted house, which is a, a great <laughs> movie, too. But anyway, we're not here to talk about movies. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, here to talk yeah. about shows. So. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about a couple of the big ones. Uh, first and foremost, you can't have an episode like this without talking about the Twilight Zone. Um, Twilight Zone is probably the most recognizable, most famous of mm-hmm. the shows that you know we're talking about. Everybody is part of the Twilight Zone. Um, it had numerous episodes, um, ran from 1959 to 1964, and was created and narrated or hosted by the great Rod Serling. Um, some of these episodes were just, I mean, and it was a complete star-studded cast back then. I mean, you had people like William Shatner in them, uh, Joan Collins, uh, just all kinds of people in these episodes that, you know, you just wouldn't even believe. And you go back now and you watch them and you're like, oh my God, I forgot he was in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of my uh, favorite Twilight Zone episodes was a an episode called The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street, and it starred uh, Claude Akins. And uh, <laughs> if you don't know who Claude Akins is, he also played uh, Lobo, I think it was. Um, Lobo. Anyway, you may not know Lobo because that was a 70s TV show. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street was just a cool episode for me, and basically it was, it was all about how society will fall apart if you just make a minor change what they did in that episode of course is they they uh, turned out all the power they had no electricity no radios their cars wouldn't run they'd shut down everything and it's the whole episode is about how they freak out and kind of start fighting amongst each other yeah and you know pushing and then, the blame off onto other people and that show too like um had a lot of uh scenarios and aspects that were ahead of their time because that stuff actually came true and stuff that you actually had. Like, I mean, I I know that probably people back then, because you think about it and they say, oh, man, they're talking about uh, cell phones in the 50s about this one. And then it's just, grant, that's going to be a progression that the world's going to take from the right, 50s to now right. but um yeah because cell phones didn't really come out until the late 70s 70s yeah you know i think is when yeah 70s they had car. i remember looking that up not too long ago because uh, i had ran and ran across a video on youtube about uh it was pictures from way back in time where there was like something weird going on you know yeah. like like there was one with a woman looked like she was talking on a cell phone. Uh-huh. And this was a picture from like the 1940s. Oh yeah. The time traveler you know? pictures. That yeah. Yeah. Of... That's what it was. Time traveler pictures. Yeah. There's uh, a bunch of them. There's, yeah. a, there's one of like a guy with a guy taking a picture of a, on a cell phone, picking a picture of something with like sunglasses on a t-shirt. Yeah. That are like from now. Yeah. Some of that shit probably be Photoshop, but it's pretty cool. You never know. Yeah. The, I remember one of the videos that I saw was interesting. It was a it was an old Mike Tyson fight from back in the early 80s. Yes. And you can see the camera uh, out in the crowd. There's a guy holding up what looks like a modern day iPhone. Yeah. Taking pictures. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what the hell that is. but Well, you know, but one show for sure that, that definitely told the future 
for sure. And I mean, Thomas to a T was the Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. Multiple oh yeah, there's times. a there's a lot of you know multiple times, a lot of times on there where they predicted the future. I mean, literally, like yeah. to the T, like yeah. yeah. Especially like the real the real creepy one is the one that with, there's a couple with Trump when Trump was coming down the escalator uh-huh. and when, as president, dude, same yeah. thing. Yeah. And then whenever he went overseas and they had that picture of him with some Saudi guy and some other guy around a bowl, a, a glowing globe. Yeah. To a T, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. crazy yeah. how the hell did the simpsons do that that is crazy man but anyway i just anyway. that's that's nuts anyway but we're uh, getting off the beaten path here well and then another one that you got to talk about 100 mm. percent for sure um is, well i, I got to move on from twilight zone to night gallery oh yeah yeah you got your night name. gallery created and hosted by rod serling he had such great success on the twilight zone he came up with the idea of Night Gallery. Night Gallery was basically a darker version of the Twilight Zone. It didn't have as star-studded of a cast, but there were quite a few A-list stars in there, but not as many as like you got with Twilight Zone or whatever. But Night Gallery, um, so Twilight Zone ended in 64. Night Gallery started in 69, and it ran from 69 to 73. I, growing up as a kid, liked night gallery a lot better than i did twilight zone not knocking twilight zone i love twilight zone but night gallery was just a darker yeah. you know yeah. creepier show and it basically revolved around uh, rod sarling was the curator of a uh, art gallery and each episode would have to do with one of their paintings on this dark creepy yeah night gallery you know cool. and uh uh, you know some really cool episodes on there. Just, yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, some of them shows it just sound like they'd be cool if they redid them. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. they have tried to redo some of them. Like, uh, you know, one show that I loved as a kid. It's not really a paranormal show per se, but it's uh, Fantasy Island. Uh, Fantasy Island. They uh, tried to bring back. Um, Fantasy Island was. You know, if you don't know the show, it starred Ricardo Montalban was mm-hmm. Mr. Rourke, and he ran this island that would grant uh, fantasies to yeah. people. They would fly into this tropical island, and Man. he would, you know, create their fantasy. Well, the years later, they tried to redo it, and I think it was in the 90s, if I remember right. Fantasy Island was, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it, yeah. was, it, it ran all through the 70s and maybe into the early 80s, but... In the remake that ran sometime in the '90s, they had uh, had Malcolm McDowell played the part of Mr. Rourke. So they most definitely cannot put my fantasies on there. <laughs> <laughs> that would be triple X fantasy. Oh know. man, yeah, buddy. So, <laughs> anyway, so and then one that we're going to talk about for a minute that is important to near and dear to both of us. Yes. Yes. Is Tales from the Crypt for sure ran from nine from eighty nine to ninety six and this show I wish they would redo I just wish they'd play the old ones on damn TV yeah the, I mean you know you can find them out there oh you can watch they're, them all on YouTube they're easy to find but yeah. yeah they're not on TV anymore I dude this show was so freaking great man for it me was. when I was a kid it I was. remember it's funny <laughs> thinking about it for the stuff I used to watch when I was little. Anyway, like the stuff I watched when I was a kid that my parents let me is kind of weird. And I guess some of them they didn't let me. Some of them they go to bed and we turn the TV on at 11, oh, yeah, 11 o'clock or midnight and start watching TV. Because I believe this came on at 11 o'clock every night and we would stay up and watch it. Yeah. And, uh, but like, uh, like I was telling you, I got my kids the, the goosebumps. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they really, he, my son, my older son, he loves horror movies, scary movies. I think he likes these better. He likes no. the Goosebumps yeah. stuff better. Well, and their well, the Goosebumps series though is geared towards kids, and it makes their mind work. You know, definitely, um, it's a it's a um, it's entertaining for them because they get it's got a kid feel to it, but it's also got a cool like an adult can watch it. Right. Um, but yeah, basically, tell us from the crib. It was um, God, I mean, that intro, one of the greatest intros yeah. ever. Coming up through the freaking mortuary and stuff, man. Yeah, and uh, the guy that played the crypt keeper, uh, John Kaiser. I mean, uh, just the the voice. 
I mean, that's of course, the, you know, the Crypt Keeper was a puppet, but uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I, we say a puppet. It wasn't a freaking Cookie Monster hand puppet. It yeah, was, yeah. You know, it looked really cool. Awesome. You know? Awesome. Um, but John Kaiser's voice behind that was just. Seeing that dummy that I was talking about on um, on Goosebumps sounds almost like that. Yeah. Almost like that. Yeah, man. Um, and the way he popped up out of the coffin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he always had some sort of one-liner or something. All the time, you know, man. Just, just, uh, All the time. That show was so great. And yeah. you were talking. And completely star-studded cast. That's what I, I mean, say. You were talking earlier about every how. Every episode had an A-list star in it. And, and I mean, A-list now, A-list. Back, yeah. Like you're talking yeah. about what Twilight Zone had, you know, William right. Shatner and stuff like that. And these, yeah. I mean, you had fucking Demi Moore, Brad Pitt. Uh, I mean, you name a person now. Yeah, they were, they in. were in it. Yeah, they were in Tales yeah. from the Crypt. I yeah. guarantee you. Oh yeah, yeah, there were a lot of them. And you know the the show itself. It, uh, what a lot of people don't realize about the show is it was actually based off of an old movie that came out in the late sixties, early seventies, uh, called Tales from the Crypt. And it was the same kind of premise, but it was. It was a, what they call an anthology movie. Yeah. It, it was it was a, four different stories told in one movie. And one of the stories that they told... So these, these people end up in this, like, cave or whatever. And this this guy, the Crypt Keeper, um, who looks like a monk. He doesn't look like the Crypt Keeper in the new yeah, series. Yeah. But he is telling their stories. And every one of their stories is how they die. Yeah. Um, and like in the movie, Joan Collins was in that movie and her, her episode was, uh, I think it was called all through the house or something like that, but it was a kind of a Christmas episode. And basically she, she ends up, uh, murdering her husband on Christmas Eve and all of a sudden she hears about this escaped killer dressed up as Santa Claus and so she figures out a way that she can blame this murder on this escaped killer. Well, the escaped killer ends up showing up at her house and ends up killing her, too. But uh, the reason why I mentioned the movie is they did the exact same episode in the Tales from the Crypt yeah. series. Yeah. Uh, different people in it. It wasn't Joan Collins. Yeah. But, uh, like a but tribute. it was cool. It, you know, the... It tied those together, you know. Like the, this is where we're going. Now, I honestly, I don't really remember the other three stories in the movie. They probably did those too, if I had to guess. I guarantee you. But, yeah, but, and that, I mean, yeah, that show was just awesome. And then it spun off into a couple great freaking movies. Oh, man. yeah. Demon Knight is probably one of the... <laughs> out of the two is definitely the better movie. Oh, for movie. sure. But period... Um, just a, the music in that movie, the actors, uh, what was it, Billy Zane was yeah, the main demon. The, the storyline, um, dude. And the storyline behind it was fantastic. Awesome, yeah, man. Yeah, awesome storyline. Yeah. And then Bordello of Blood, which was the other movie um, that it dealt with Tied vampires it, yeah. and stuff. It is actually going to be on, spoiler, our next episode. Da, da, da. Um, but, you know, it was a cool movie, and it's right, too, you know? Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Um, I just, you know, certain movies stick out to you. Yeah. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, yeah. Demon Knight was definitely the better That's of the That's a movie two. that stuck in my head for a long time and, like, stayed there, you and know? It had some great music in it. I mean, Megadeth did one of the songs on there. Uh, yeah. Uh, who was it? Um, freaking um, Jada Pickett Smith mm -hmm. was in it. Yeah. Um, there's a yeah, it's just really good, man. I mean, I, that movie is really and the, stuck and the, in my... the main guy. He's been in everything, but I can't remember his name. Yes, I, I not been in everything, but he's been in a lot of stuff. Um, and played, I just cannot remember his name. He played in another one of my favorite movies, uh, Disturbing Behavior. Oh yeah, he played the janitor. Yeah, you're right. He you're played right. the janitor, and uh, the guy who winds up killing all the other. But yeah, that's you're right. I forgot about too. that. He played in that too. Yeah, and he was also in a bunch of like, oh yeah, like I remember, um, you know, the Murder She Wrote series. Um, that's another series that, you know, is kind of off topic here, and we're not here to talk about Murder She Wrote by no means. But um, <laughs> come on, you know they want to hear. That it. was another one of those shows that had a big star-studded cast yeah. in it, yeah. and I remember him being in a couple episodes of it too. But but anyway, we're we're gonna move on here. Um, 
I'm going to talk about one of my favorite series out of all of these, and that's got to be The X-Files. Yeah. Uh, the X-Files, interestingly enough for me, I did not get into The X-Files when it first came out on TV. I actually didn't get into it until it had been on for probably four or five seasons. Yeah. Um, and then a friend of mine forced me to watch a couple episodes and uh, after I watched those, I thought, man, this is pretty cool, you know. Well, then once the internet got big or whatever, I found them online and ended up watching the whole series. And I absolutely love that series. I mean, how can you go wrong when you've got David Duchovny and Jillian Anderson playing two FBI agents chasing down these weird, yeah, one's, strange stories uh, about aliens and one's ghosts? One's more and, of a, uh, you know, more she's of a, a skeptic. Sick, skeptic type, yeah. and he's the conspiracy yeah. you know, like paranormal yep. type. Oh yeah, yeah. Great show, you know, X-Files ran from 93 to 2002 and then it spawned two movies. One came out in 2016 or I'm sorry. One of them came out in 1998 and the other one came out in 2008. Uh in 2016 they brought the series back yeah. for a six uh six episode run. And then it came back around in 2018, and they did t 10 new episodes with the same characters in it. Um, I absolutely love the new series. Yes. I hope that they bring that back and, yeah. and start running it on a regular basis. Yeah, it was good, man. It was fantastic. I, I'll i be honest with you. I think I like the new ones better than I did the old ones. Yeah, my dad watched those like when they were came out so when there are new new you know new episodes and stuff he watched those so i watched yeah. them when i was a kid yeah and that's what i remember watching those a lot i remember you know it's funny like the stuff that sticks in your head from those because like one of them like episode that stuck in my head like when they were out at a native american place out in the mountains somewhere and they're something killing the killing the people and he was thinking it's a, like a werewolf or a was shapeshifter. The, the Wendigo or something, something like, yes. like that. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. I remember that episode. Yeah, that really was a well. cool episode. Really good episode. Yeah. And I, I mean, they they touched on everything. I mean, they, they had episodes about werewolves and, I mean, just everything you can imagine. I remember one, they had one about some sort of uh, larva type man that lived in the sewers and was like yeah. killing killing people and stuff and eating them and I, yeah they just they did it all in that but you're right you know the 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 new episodes were great and they I really think, were they'd be cool well, and i think that's because of technology they can true, do so much true. more with them you know well and you got great actors oh yeah yeah you know yeah. and jillian um, anderson is still just smoking hot <laughs> redheads huh yeah. well it's funny i had a poster of her on my wall for a long time from back then but it wasn't she didn't look like <laughs> Dana Scully, you know, she was, uh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, man, we better anyway. quit talking about that. Yeah, we need to quit I'm talking gonna about that. I'm going to close in area with you, and you're My trying to... My wife will to... divorce me. <laughs> well, let's talk about... I'm going to go ahead and bring this one up, then. I'm going to talk about um, Goosebumps. Okay. With uh, R.L. Stein, you know, who's the director of it, or writer of the book and stuff. I guess he probably wasn't the director of the show, but he was the writer of the books and whatnot, and... um. Yeah, dude, Goosebumps was a huge, huge part of my childhood. I know you were a lot older than I am, like, a lot older. But yeah, I, mean. <laughs> I never I never watched the... Yeah, I am old. Uh, I never watched those. Um, they were a little past my time. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know. But, I mean, um, had a really great intro. It caught you at the intro, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sucked you yeah. in at the intro. Yeah, I, I know, because, you know, since, since you and I have met and, yeah. you know, started hanging out a lot... You have, you know, turned me on to some of those shows that I missed. And yeah, that, you know, yeah. in the nineties, you know, and and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, I was a busy guy back then. Oh yeah, music world, baby. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, the intro sucked you in from the beginning, mm -hmm. so it had you yeah. hooked. And I mean, every day after school, you know, you get out of school and you'd start, you'd watch Goose, Goosebumps, and what's cool is that, you know. Okay, well, let's go ahead and go with the Goosebumps a little bit there, but there were some episodes. Um, it came out around 95 to 98, you know, so it wasn't a huge, like a long, super long, long run, run yeah. but it was a great show. Um, you know, um, The Ghost Next Door was one and two or some really good ones that I, that as a kid, I, I remember in my head, they're still in my head. Um, but a lot of, I mean, about the, the books are in my head. Yes. In my head. 
Okay, I'm going to start singing freaking... Oh, now you're going into zombie. Right? Well, <laughs> it's funny. I was watching Bellator fights last night, and there's all a bunch of Irish fighters on there, and a guy yeah. walked out to zombie, yeah. you know, by the cranberries, and the whole crowd sang it. Yeah. Which is crazy. They don't ever hard yeah. to do that, dude. The whole crowd singing it. They were even singing it while he was fighting. Dude, it's funny that you talk about Bellator fights, because I ran myself down a rabbit hole yesterday. I got Somehow I got sucked into watching a bunch of Joe Rogan episodes. Oh, I tell you, his yeah, podcast. You oh get, my god, dude! Uh, how smart is that guy? I mean, he. Well, like he said, he says all the time. He's like, I'm not smart. He's like, I just can't remember things. I talk to smart people who make me sound smart. Yeah, I was I was blown away because I mean I didn't think he, you know, because the what I what I really ran into was I was watching a bunch of episodes where they were talking about. Uh, Egypt and the Sphinx and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, he's a lot I'm of very interested into that kind of, and. Ugh, I'm very interested in that kind of stuff. And he was in there, with, he's sitting in there with scientists and professors, and, I mean, he's, like, carrying on a conversation, a legit conversation with yeah, these people. Yeah, I mean, he's smart. These guys were talking way over my head. But you got to realize, too, that that's what he does for a living. Yeah. So, yeah. like, he has time to, when he has a guest coming To do on. the research. Yeah, and, and he's going to have Apparently, he research. reads a lot. That was a one lot. thing I caught. Yeah, he reads a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, one thing I don't like about him is that he doesn't believe in ghosts. Yeah. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, even though he's had multiple people on there talking about ghost experiences, and he still just is... You know what, Bo? I bet, I think he believes... He used to be a hardcore conspiracy theorist. I think that he still is. I think he just knows that he's going to have to stay away from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think he still is. I catch it. When yeah. he when he starts drinking, because there's a lot of podcasts where they start drinking well, and smoking. Dude, I noticed he had a bottle of bourbon sitting yeah. on his table. When he starts drinking and smoking and then the stuff yeah. comes out, and you can tell he's still into this shit. Yeah. He just keeps his shit yeah. under, under. Well, it was know. funny because I ended up coming across a, a episode where he was talking to uh, Danica Patrick yep. about reincarnation and yep. stuff. And I'm like, what the hell? Yep. You know? But it, it was kind of cool. It was, I mean, if, if you guys are interested in conspiracy theory kind of stuff, Joe Rogan has a pretty cool podcast, and they do a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, I think he still is. He just kind of keeps it on DL. But when he starts yeah. drinking and smoking, then, yeah. guy, <laughs> then it comes out of him, you know what I mean? Yeah, I gotcha. But, uh, anyway, yeah, anyway. you know, Goosebumps is great. And basically what I was going to say is, it kind of leads into my next one, too. When I got out of school, Goosebumps would come on. And then yeah. after that, yeah. are you afraid of the dark? I, I was going to mention, are you afraid of the dark? And the only reason why is because I remember when you sent me that clip of the intro yes. for that. And I th- you know, and it had one of those intros that just kind of grabs a hold of you. you yeah. know? And, and in fact, we considered possibly using that intro for our podcast. Yeah. But then we changed our minds. There were some legality issues yeah. there. And we you know decided we couldn't do that. But, but yeah, dude, I mean, that intro is killer. That's another one. They come on yeah. after Goosebumps. Yeah. So you're watching these back to back, man. It was so freaking That's freaking cool. hilarious. You came home from school and you watched Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark? When I came home from school, I watched Bugs Bunny and Scooby-Doo. <laughs> was it Scooby-Doo that I showed Sco- you earlier? Scooby-Doo. Oh, yeah. I would have watched the hell out of that. <laughs> um <laughs> Scooby Doo though was another one, you know. Oh no, but, yeah, for sure, yeah. I mean, but anyway, we're not here to talk about Scooby. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, Are You Afraid of Dark was a great, great series, you know, for kids. It's and it's still it's come out in ninety nineteen ninety to two thousand. Had a pretty good little run. Um, and it was cool, you know, the kids would come out and it all it always started at, at a campfire. Like the show was always at a campfire. The kids would come out and like every episode would call the tale of whatever you know like the tale of the laughing in the dark or the tale of the ghost in the headstone whatever you know whatever it may be and um it was always told by kids and it was all about kids so it was good for all you horror fanatics out there listening out there right now if you got kids and you want to put them on to some cool shows you may be you may already know about these but yeah goosebumps are you afraid of the dark are two really good shows that uh your kids can watch and know what they'd be happy with and that you can actually watch i can yeah. watch them today yeah. you know you can get them on youtube too so so you know but, well i'm just gonna do it i'm gonna talk about scooby-doo oh, oh, you <laughs> talk about scooby you know you gotta you gotta kind of talk about scooby-doo because as a kid or an adult i mean because i bought my wife the series my wife's a huge scooby-doo fan um and i bought her the series a few years ago they had released uh I, I don't know, and a new and improved, uh, the original series on in a box set. 
So I bought it for them. We've watched through them, and you can still watch that stuff today. It is still not so campy that you can you can't watch it. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, for me, it's a nostalgia thing because I remember when they were on. But you know, these these kids dealt with everything. I'm probably gonna watch Scooby Doo here a little bit. Ghost, uh, I bet you are. <laughs> I bet you are. Uh, but you know, they dealt with all kinds of stuff: aliens and zombies yeah. and vampires and ghosts and you know, just everything. You know, I know it's a cartoon, but we're not going to spend much time on it. But you know, it's funny for as many episodes of Scooby Doo that there are, the original only ran two years. That's crazy. But they made so many. There's yeah, there's only two seasons, but there's like fifty something episodes or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly That's how many nuts. episodes it is, but there's a bunch. You know. That's crazy. For that amount of seasons to have that many episodes is just nuts. Yeah. Cray, cray, cray. Well, okay, I'm sorry, there's not. There's definitely there's, more than that. Gotta be. According to IMDb, in the two seasons, there were only 25 episodes. No way. I think there's more than that, yeah. but I could be wrong. I'll have to get the box set out and actually see, because yeah. it's got all of them on it. Shoot, yeah. So, but you know, you can't you can't count the reiterations. You know, I'm just talking about the main, the very first one to come out, the Scooby Doo. Where are you? You know, and then that led into Scooby Doo's new movies, and you know where. And those were kind of cool because then they'd they'd have guests come on. You know, and they'd have like I remember they had the Harlem Globetrotters on there. Oh, Uh, Batman and Robin. You know, oh that's pretty different. Yeah, they had different ones. It was kind of cool. So you got but, some uh, older ones you want to talk about? Well, um, I don't know that I've got any older ones. Well, um, I mean, there are definitely I, some new ones I, we're going to be talking I, about. But. I I do have a couple older ones. Um, one of them everybody on the planet has heard of, and that is Unsolved Mysteries. Oh man, yeah. Unsolved Mysteries ran from uh, from nineteen eighty seven to two thousand ten, and it was hosted by Robert Stack, and. I really enjoy the documentary style, uh, you know, TV shows. A lot of people now are getting into these ghost hunter shows, you know, ghost adventures, ghost hunters. uh, We're going to talk about those. I know you you really like Kindred Spirits and, you know, some other ones like that. And I like those shows, too. But I like more the documentary style, yeah. you know, where they're, it's not really a reenactment. They're telling you yeah, a story yeah. of what happened, you know, and I just, I kind of like that. Um, but Unsolved Mysteries, great series, uh, ran for quite a few years. And, and the host, Robert Stack, his his voice was just, as soon as you heard his voice, you knew you were watching Unsolved Mysteries, you yeah. know. But uh, the other one that was really good and it ran about that about that same time was a show called Sightings. Yep, I a lot of that. people may not remember that show. I remembered it because it was it dealt more with the kind of stuff we're into. Yeah, um, ghosts and aliens and cryptids and vampires and stuff. You know, they dealt with all of that stuff. Um, it was hosted by a guy. His name was Dale Timothy White, and it ran from 1991 to 1997 did numerous episodes and it was along the lines of unsolved mysteries it was that documentary yeah. style and see i remember that because know. i i was talking about like it had like the uh crop circle signals in the yeah uh, in the yeah in their intro in and, the intro stuff. and yeah. stuff yeah like that. oh yeah yeah yep. it was a cool show yeah so. you know speaking of shows like that are kind of like that now that i've kind of like documentary i mean a little bit but there's a new show out and i can't remember the name of it i tried to look it up earlier it was talked about last night when i was watching uh kindred spirits um but it's about footage that people have out there of you know paranormal stuff happening to them like that cool ass video i showed you with the freaking morgue door thing slamming oh yeah, yeah, slamming yeah. And the security yeah, guard. i watched that this morning the worker and the security guard was going down there the dude has gun drawn and everything dude that's freaking so wicked cool yeah. but it's, a, it's basically a show like that shows a bunch of uh bunch of different home videos and security cameras like have you seen a video of the the dude the security guard at that uh i don't even know what kind of place it was but he's sitting there at his desk it's a black guy he's sitting there and you see him and he's at his desk and all of a sudden he kind of sits back and just follows like this looking in front of him and on the security camera you don't see nothing until it gets about right almost out of circuit out of uh focus and then you see this white mist and the whole time that's happening, this dude's sitting at his desk like, he stands up, 
And he like looks at the camera and he's like, you know, he's talking to the camera. He's yeah. like, I know you've seen that. I know you've seen that. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. Dude, you have to look that up. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And dude talks about it. He's like, yeah, dude. He's You know, you talk about strange footage like that. Have you seen the one from inside the school? Yes. With the locker doors moving? Yeah, dude, and a chair. And, and the, the, the wet floor sign goes flipping Fun. up in the air. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yes, that, pretty cool. The show I'm talking about is all about, about all of yeah. that. It's yeah. about all this footage. That's those two things that you we just talked about mm-hmm. are actually inside the intro okay. to the show. Uh, I wonder if that's the ghost caught on camera. It might be. Uh, I, I can't remember because the name that's of it. one of the shows that I I watch, um, and I remember seeing that on there. There's a bunch of shows like that right now um, that I was going to get into, but we might as well just get into them now. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, was the ghost caught on camera? Um, pretty cool show. It's um, it's all about strange footage. Um, I saw one the other day. It was really weird. And I, I got to talk about this for a minute because it, it kind of has my mind kind of screwed up. So it was over in like, over in Europe somewhere in like Malaysia or, you know, yeah. one of those countries over there. I don't remember exactly where it was, but you see this cab pull up and there's a guy standing on the on the curb and it looks like they may be in like some sort of parking garage or something uh you can tell like he's walked out of like maybe an airport or something Uh, and he's gonna get in this cab well he steps off the off the curb and starts walking towards the cab and you see the door open on the cab and then all of a sudden you see this um this woman that looks like the girl from the ring (laughs) okay with the long black hair walking behind him and you can and it's transparent you can see through it and it gets in the cab with him now a lot of people and they even talked about this on the show they can't explain it they don't know what it is but they suspect that it's you know somebody is playing a hoax here because there's there's some stuff going on there that doesn't you know that would make it easier to to hoax this video oh yeah but the one thing that that really threw me for a loop is the cab door opens before the guy gets to the cab. What? <laughs> yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. You know, I sat there watching it, and I'm like, and they're all talking about this ghost following him and blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting there thinking, why the fuck did that door just open? He, <laughs> he didn't even touch the door. Yeah, no shit. I mean, he was like 10 feet away from the cab, and the door opens. I mean, do the do cabs over there have automatic doors? Yeah, I don't I don't know what the hell. <laughs> open sesame. I don't know. I mean, now maybe they do. Maybe it's a I don't know. But that was that was the thing in my head. I was like, why the hell did that cab door just open? So crazy. You know, but uh but you know, so that's Ghost Caught on Camera. Um one of my one of my favorite shows right now is a show called Beyond the Unknown. And it is hosted by that Don Wildman who does like mysteries at the museum uh-huh. and stuff like that. Um, it's, I've watched some really cool episodes of that here lately and he does his stuff. It's like, a, it's like a documentary style kind of reenactment, but the only reason why there's a reenactment is so you've got a visual reference for what they're talking about. But, uh, you know, he talks about all kinds of stuff about Ouija boards and he's talked about Harry Houdini and psychics and ghosts and just all kinds of weird stuff. I mean, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool show. If you haven't checked it out, I I would highly recommend it. Yeah, I'm trying to catch them all. And it, it's a new show. It just started this year. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, and then I mean, um, you know, talked about Kindred Spirits. Um, that's a TV show. It's a good TV show. You know, it's got um, it's got a couple of the people off of uh, Taps Team, which is the Ghost Hunters, which we'll talk about in a which, little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh. I watched one last night that they had on. They went back to Waverly Hills. Waverly Hills Sanitarium. The Ghost Hunters episode of that was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Well, they went, these two went back because the lady who owns it now, she was going to turn it into another hotel. She was going to turn oh, it really? She was going to turn it into a hotel and then she bought it. Okay. And now she just, you know, it's open for tours and stuff like right. that. She bought it. Now she's what they call a uh, cryptic keeper or something like that. They Cryptic keeper. They, yeah, Dude, they, that's a cool... Yeah, term. they keep it they keep it up and uh, alive so people can still investigate it and there's because it's so busy you know with activity but one of the cool things last night dude like i said kindred spirits is a great show guys they don't find a lot of evidence all the time 
Um, I watched an episode the other day, and they brought Grant Wilson back in, which we'll talk mm-hmm. about him in yeah. a little bit yeah. on from Ghost Hunters. I love that guy to death. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, he needs to put another show out. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. He 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 was on there, and um, but the one last night I watched when they went back to Wave of the Hills, dude. They don't catch stuff like I said a lot. So the show's kind of this. Yeah, so they're not like ghost adventurers where they catch something on every episode. They don't get possessed every time they walk into a room. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Somebody <laughs> posted up. Okay, I watched a little bit of one last night. It just happened to be on TV while I was uh, on my laptop. And, you know, I was like, oh, ghost adventurers. I turned it on. And they're like, they were out in this field and they had saw something run behind some like old wooden shed or something. And they're like, oh, we need to get out there. We need to get out there. Aaron. <laughs> Go out there by yourself. And, and so it's funny. They go over to the car, and Aaron has got a death grip on the steering wheel of this car. You know, and he's standing beside the car, and they're like, Aaron, get your camera. You know, and they're trying to get him away from the car. And he's like, no, no, no. And finally, they peel his hand off this. <laughs> Why? Why this guy? Every time. They put yeah, him dude. in some really fucked up situations. Someone posted up a, a meme, and it had a picture of Zach Baggins, like all serious looking. And it said, Tom says, walks into child's birthday party, gets possessed by demon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to knock the guy because no. you and I both know he's doing exactly what we would love to do for oh, a living. Oh, shit, yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, I, know, he's doing exactly but, what I would love uh, to he do. He just, he's so animated and so, and you know, uh, I don't even know what the word is. You could is. tell when, we, you could Full tell. shit, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you could tell when real stuff happens on the show, like I said. Though, yeah. Because like. Because it freaks him out. He actually gets scared. Yeah. You tell he like, he'll like stop and pause. Like normally something like is, they already know what's up. You know, it's yeah. just planned. I tell you the one that sticks out to me was they did an episode about the Missouri State Penitentiary, which is right here in our back. Well, oh, it's, yeah. it's about an hour and a half away. But yeah. But anyway, they did an episode and he was down in the, uh death row area yeah by himself taking video and he like all of a sudden he was you know he was walking through and you hear something in the background and this guy like drops his camera and he's like i gotta get the hell out of here and he just takes off you know? <laughs> yeah dude and, uh, yeah you tell when real stuff happens. yeah yeah but um yeah. it's still a good show i like it. it's entertaining to me man he gets he gets to do what i want to do for a living man and yeah yeah but um anyway kindred spirits man they're at waverly hill right and they're doing an EVP session because this lady, the lady that owns the place, I think her name is Tina or something like that. Okay. She's saying that there's been some pretty aggressive activity going on and there's an aggressive spirit there, you know. And um, they're doing a little EVP session in the spot on the fourth floor, which is the, the worst floor or whatever, haunted, most haunted okay. one. And um, she started talking about, um, you know, do you want us to talk to your family and friends for you? you want us to get a hold of them, let them know? Or we don't have to if you don't want to, if you or if you just want to talk to us. And when soon she says that, if soon you, if you unless you want to talk to us, right after that, dude, they get this aggressive as hell. No, just wow. like that, dude. Wow. I mean, it was. And then when it happened, the look on both her face was like petrified. She was like, yeah. like that. And then because they played it back automatically, they call it a live EVP right. session. And they played it back right after they got done. And when they played it back, they didn't hear it at first, but when they played it back, is when yeah. they heard it. Yeah. And uh, he, he was like, oh, my, the guy was like, oh, my God, that's, he's like, that's really, uh, wow. That's, you look at her face yeah, and they're like, yeah. oh, my God, like, this thing is aggressive as hell. Right. But that was really fucking cool, dude. I was like, oh, shit, man. Because they don't hardly find nothing. But when they do, like, they'll show you. Yeah, it's something dude, major, yeah. I was like, holy shit, dude, that was badass. Yeah, that's cool. That's one of the best EVs cool. I've ever heard, dude. Yeah. Well, you know, and if you remember, that's how... That's how Ghost Hunters were was when it was in its prime, you know, when it first started and was an actual uh, real, real show. Well, let's you know? go. Let's, well, let's let's talk about it. If okay. Gonna, you okay. Know, let's get it. go ahead. You know, Ghost Hunters, probably one of the most influential shows to me that I had. For this genre, for yeah. My, for yeah. what I was into. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson – they own, you know, they run the TAPS, which is a Transatlantic yeah. Paranormal Society. Right, right. And, um, dude. Uh, yeah, they, they pretty much, uh, they pre- you almost have to say they started the entire ghost hunting craze. Oh, for um, sure. They, uh, 
they recorded all their sessions, and what ended up happening was a sci-fi got a hold of some of their footage and approached them about doing a show. And they were both kind of reluctant about doing it because I remember Jason talking about, you know, we were really worried about what they were going to do if they were going to, you know, exploit the stuff and like, yeah. like try and make it something that it's not because they went into everything to try and debunk it. Try to help families and try to debunk um, stuff. Right. Um, so when the show first started, that's how it was. It was them doing what they wanted to do. Um, the show started in 2004 and ran to 2016. Um, somewhere about four seasons in, three or four seasons mm -hmm. in, s that show completely changed. Well, what happened was Sci-Fi didn't like their ratings, so they wanted them to bump it up a notch. So Sci-Fi went to them and said, you know, or their producers, I don't know that it was actually Sci-Fi, yeah. but their producers went to them and said, hey, we need to start, you know, like making stuff happen yeah, or something is yeah. what it seemed like I, you know i don't know and maybe I, I don't know we might be able we might get in trouble for this i don't know but it just seems like that show changed it wasn't the well you same. could tell that even grant talked about it and so is jason but grant you know really talked about it, like it went away from what they were supposed to be about right and right. um that's why you could tell in those later episodes before grant left like he wasn't happy he wasn't having a good time like he used to. Right. You know, right. Um, they're real guys and they're real truthful about it. Yeah. You, know? you know, I mean, like, you remember that episode when they went to the bar and found all that shit. Yeah, that that is probably one of the coolest things. That's what kind of cemented them because they could have played that off and not shown that. But basically, folks, they go into a bar and they're doing a, a real investigation and then come to find out the bar owner has rigged a bunch of stuff to happen. Yeah. Like there were uh, motors, uh, actuators up in the ceiling to make uh, chandeliers move. Uh -huh. um, there was a, uh, a mirror in the bathroom that they had rigged that they had a mask behind the mirror and a light that would flicker and it would look like a spirit in yeah. the mirror or something. There was a bunch of stuff that they found and they were pissed off about it too. Oh, I, yeah. mean, I mean, they, they said, you know, when they sat down with the owner, was, they were like, why the hell would you do this? Why, believe, why would you waste our time? I believe Steve Gonzalez the one that found it. Yeah. Uh, he's the one that was like, Hey, wait a minute. There's, and then he came and told Jason and Grant about it. Right. Which right. Steve was one of my other favorites. On yeah. The show. Yeah. He was probably one of my favorite guys on that group. I just yeah you know. yeah yeah, and then I mean it's that show. <clears throat> Do we ever hear from him anymore? I mean, is he? No, I know that uh, Jason Hawes has a a good show that you guys listen to called. Uh, it's actually a radio show, but they put it out as a podcast as well, and it's called um, Beyond Reality Radio. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's pretty good. You check it out. They have a, him and him and JV Johnson. <laughs> They have their show. And, and who is a J.D. Johnson guy? J.D. Johnson is a guy. Um, he was a uh, radio show owner, but he's also a paranormal investigator. Okay. And stuff okay. like that. Um, he was, uh, he's friends with Jason okay. and stuff like that. See, I haven't listened to that podcast enough. I've got a couple of their episodes downloaded, but I listen to so many podcasts. Yeah, now. I know. It's hard to catch all it, of them. It's, you know. But he, um, together. I haven't got sucked into that one yet. They got a pretty good know. show together. Um, and Grant Wilson actually has a show on youtube called what the fetch or something like that because okay i do i do remember you telling me something about that yeah he has one too and guys check him out man i mean they're they're the like the godfathers of this shit so i mean you help them out they're still doing their thing but they had to go away from the show because of what they were doing to it you know yeah, yeah. they but uh yeah and i mean in ghost adventures then they uh you know ghost hunters sparred off to like the ghost hunters international yeah, and they yeah. did a lot of cool shows overseas, yeah. man. Well, and, and there's, well, and we got to mention some of those too because there's that show Most Haunted, which is from yep. uh, London area, I think. Uh, there's there's a lot of stuff out there. Oh yeah, you know? I mean, and you got like if you're into these kind of kind of shows, I personally, I don't I don't really care for the found footage kind of stuff. Yeah, I, don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved Ghost Hunters when it first started. Mm -hmm. I was like addicted to it i couldn't get through the week without watching it i had to watch it every halloween i had to watch their halloween special oh yeah you know i mean i was hooked until about the third or fourth season and then i was like you know i've had enough of this crap 
Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, then you got like My Haunted House, A Paranormal Survivor. Mm-hmm. And, and some of those are really cool because oh, I yeah. like how they do those. Uh, you know, almost uh, all of these shows, each episode has its own theme and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, like the, the My Haunted House uh, had the uh, the Screaming House. Yes. Was yeah. on there. Yeah. And that was a really good episode. And if you don't know about that, you need to go back a few episodes of our podcast yep. and listen. Because we actually talk about that a lot with uh, Stephen Lachance. Yep. Well, he wasn't talking with us, but he, it was his story that yeah, we yeah, were yeah. telling. Yeah, we just told the story of the um, Screaming House in Union, Missouri. But yeah. But, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, there's a lot of good shows, guys. You could use this episode as, like, a, uh, basically, uh, just a tutorial on some stuff. If, you, if you're just getting into this or you want to check some stuff out. Just it's like to, an audio TV guide. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, let me talk about a couple others that I really want to mention here um, that don't have anything to do with Ghost Hunters or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, They're yeah. just some shows that I absolutely loved. Um, there was a show that was that ran for about five years from 2010 to 2015 and it was called haven and it uh was based off of a stephen king novel uh, it was based off a stephen king story called the colorado kid um and basically it was about the small island in maine called haven and everybody on this island had some sort of what they called a trouble uh they had some sort of gift that whether they wanted it or not, that's why they called them troubles, you know, and it was weird stuff. Like some people could control the weather and it would usually happen like it, it some traumatic event well, in their emotional. life, you know, yeah. yeah, an emotional event. Um, some people would turn people to stone, other people, you know, I mean, every episode was about somebody else's trouble and the whole thing revolved around, uh, this woman, uh, Audrey Parker, who was played by Emily Rose. Uh, she was an FBI agent that got, sent to Haven to investigate some of these strange stories. Well, she ends up uh, getting, uh, striking up a partnership with one of their police officers, Nathan Warnos. And at the time, when it first started, Nathan's father was the chief of police. Well, as the series goes, his father passes away. Strange passing yeah. at that. Um, so Nathan becomes the chief, and so the whole series is about Nathan and Audrey and their relationship with each other. Um, it, it's kind of like a Mulder and Scully dynamic, you know. You want them to get together, but, y- you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's basically the same thing, you know. So, and then uh, they also, Eric Balfour uh, played the uh, bad guy. I mean, he was he was a guy that uh, he owned uh, owned a bar, but him and Nathan were best friends when they were younger. But as they got older, uh, Eric Balfour's character um, was, uh, you know, he was into smuggling yeah. and stuff like that. And he was he was always, him and Nathan were always at each other. They always remained friends, but there was some tension there between the two. Yeah. Well, the whole series is about the three of them trying Threesome. to help. Threesome. Trying to... <laughs> Kinda about Bam. uh we never see a threesome. We come pretty close a couple times, heck? but uh but great series. I mean it was uh it was a fun watch. Uh my wife and I both really loved that series. It sounds good. I'm actually um, probably gonna might go back and check that out. Yeah, I mean, it is really cool. Um I think you can find it on Netflix and Amazon. It's probably on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll probably want to check that one out. So that's uh, one. And then uh, then I'm going to talk about a big one that a lot of people are watching now, and that's American Horror Story. Yeah. Uh, American Horror Story, for me, um, I know you and I have talked about this. You're yeah. not really into it. Yeah. But I absolutely love the whole series. Now, there are seasons that I like more than other seasons. Um, for me, my favorite season was a season called Coven. Um, and it was all about witches. Uh, the first season was really good. It was... Uh, it was uh, the murder house and it was about a haunted house that these people move into um what's cool about american horror story is every season is a different is about something different but now we're eight nine seasons in and everything is clashing back together yeah and one like i said one of my favorite seasons was one called coven and uh it you know it's got you know jessica lang and sarah paulson uh uh, Emma Roberts is in it, and then the the girl. Oh God, I can't remember her name. Lord something. 
She's uh, she's actually Carrie Fisher's daughter, um, is in it. But uh, anyway, uh, Coven was about this group of witches, young teenage witches that were living in a, a, a basically it was a school for witches, and it was all about their trials and their you know fight against voodoo and all this stuff. You know, well it all clashes together and now like this last season everything's coming together this last season was about the apocalypse and it was really cool about about three episodes in the witches show up at this you know earth has been earth hasn't been destroyed but there's been an apocalypse so almost the entire planet is dead and these witches show back up and yeah it was it was pretty cool see it pretty sounds cool. good i just yeah. i call it the first you you have to to really appreciate the whole the series as a whole, you really need to go back and watch it from the beginning because as you go through, even though every season is a different story, it, it all ties together somehow. You yeah, know? Gonna... And, and you won't really realize that until you start from the beginning and start watching them. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Maybe. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It's not for everybody. I mean, but it's I, I've really enjoyed it. Um, now, there have been some seasons that i didn't really care for like there was one about roanoke uh roanoke if a lot of people don't know was about a society of people that disappeared and you know went crazy and killed a bunch of people but anyway (laughs) um i don't want to get too too much into that story but i didn't really care for that season it was weird it was about a television crew coming in and filming and you know the it was actually about a television crew you know and it just oh yeah uh, yeah you know it was uh it yeah so, but American Horror Story, fun to watch. If you haven't seen it, go back to the beginning and check it out. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably, I'll probably wind up trying yeah. to check it out or something sometime yeah. when I'm bored. A um, couple new ones I want to talk about uh, is the show Midnight Texas. Midnight Texas is a show, um, it's been on NBC. Uh, so far, they're, they've done two seasons i say you know seasons are so weird now i'm yeah, used to seasons oh, yeah. being multiple episodes now they now they ha- you know they have a season and then they do a mid-season break for yeah, like yeah. six weeks and then they come back and and they're only giving you like five episodes or six episodes or eight or whatever it is you know Jeez, but it's yeah. like i can't keep the damn season straight but it's been running for two years now it started in 2017 um and it is about a town called midnight texas that is inhabited by uh there's a werewolf a vampire yeah uh, you're talking a guy I mean, you're that talking can talk to ghosts um a witch um and they're all friends and they it's kind of like they're solving problems and crimes i definitely want to check like this that. one out yeah it's it's a really cool show but uh, unfortunately i fear it's been canceled um there's, oh, it, dude, there's mean, been rumor that it's been canceled but Talking about things being canceled, one of the, one of the other shows that has been canceled is Lucifer. Yeah, um, Lucifer, fantastic show. I love that show. I've never seen the previews for that. Um, and it's it's not what you would think it is. Basically, Lucifer's a playboy. I mean, he's uh, he owns a owns a uh, nightclub called Lux, and I mean, you know, of course, he's super rich, and he uh, partners up with a police officer and helps her solve crime. So he basically becomes a consultant. So the devil works for the Los Angeles Police Department. Go <laughs> figure. Go you know? uh, figure. But anyway, it got canceled last year. Last episode, never going to see it again. I just found out a couple weeks ago, there's a whole listing of a new season coming out. But I think it's going to be a Netflix exclusive. Oh, yeah. Well, so, that's what they're doing now. Well, that's like there's another great show. It's not horror related, but it's a fucking awesome show. The Punisher. The Punisher. Yeah. And, uh, Unfortunately, I just found out it just got canceled. And too. it didn't get canceled, really. Uh, freaking, it's doing great in the ratings, but Disney owns it now, and Disney is taking all the Marvel, anything. That's comics. what I was going to mention. Yeah, because Jessica Jones is gone now. Yeah, they're taking all the freaking uh, comic stuff off of the off of everything except for their stuff. Which sucks. I heard yeah, the show is yeah. amazing. It, it is. It is. I, I I had not watched the second season yet. It's on. I just haven't watched it yet. The first season was great. I heard. It's, I heard. Great. It's, people are pissed because it's it's freaking awesome show. Yeah. Yeah. And well, the guy the guy playing the Punisher yeah, playing awesome. Frank is is a uh, uh, shame from, from Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Yep. He's a great actor. Too. And it, yeah, he he's done a fantastic job at it. Yeah. 
But one more, I don't know, I don't know if you have any more shows you want to talk about. No, I just wanted to quickly mention a couple oh, of yeah. those because uh, they're just shows that I really want Well, there's love one I really want to talk about just real fast to mention because everybody's got to watch it if you haven't seen it. If you want to laugh and it's a good horror show, Stan vs. Evil. <laughs> that makes me laugh just hearing the title. Dude, have it. you seen that show? I have not watched it. No. Watch one episode of okay, that show, I will. dude. Oh, yeah. And you're going to be like, oh, shit, I'm watching every yeah. one of these episodes. Yeah. Great show, dude. Yeah. Great. It's got the doctor. I can't remember his damn name. It's got the the main one of the main doctors off of Scrubs on it. The the mm-hmm. older guy. Okay. And he's um the one who's a real smart ass. I love him. He's hilarious. God dang it, what is his name? It's gonna piss me off now. Anyway, the show is funny as hell. It's all about like supernatural shit and it's dude, great, great, yeah. great, great. And what's it on? I believe it's Showtime. Okay. I want to say Showtime. I'm not 100. percent I just watched okay. the show on. Okay. I think I caught it on the internet. I may somewhere. have to try and find it on. Yeah, somewhere yeah, that, on the that's internet where I or watched whatever. Because I don't have Showtime. But you know, well, talking about that show kind of reminded me. There's a there was a show that was on for a while called Holliston that I really wanted to watch, and I never got to see any of it because it was on. It was on one of the platforms that I don't subscribe to. Yeah. It may have been Hulu. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, it had. A bunch of bunch of people in it. Uh, basically, it was about a bunch of people that, from from what I gather from the previews of it and stuff, it was about a bunch of people that lived in a house, and it was all about metalheads and stuff and and creepy. Uh, well, I mean, so Dave Brocky, who was the lead singer for Guar, was in it, and he was in it as his character, Odious, uh, Odorous. <laughs> or Diffius, I think is his name or whatever. Well, unfortunately he passed away and I think that may be what ended the show. Yeah. But D Schneider had been in it. Kane Hodder was in it. Um, Kane Hodder was in it as himself. And it was funny. Some of the stuff, uh, I just watched that, uh, documentary to hell and back the story of Kane Hodder, uh-huh. which if you haven't seen that dude, you have got to yeah, watch it. Gonna, it is amazing. Amazing. But, uh, he talks about Holliston in there. And it's funny because his character in that show, he plays himself as Jason. Uh, he's not Jason, but he plays himself. And they talk about him being Jason a lot. And in fact, he even in the show deals with the fact that he was replaced when they started, when they started to film Freddy versus Jason. Yeah. Because he was approached to play Jason again as Freddy versus Jason. If you guys don't know who Kane Hodder is, Kane Hodder, has well he has killed more people on screen than anybody else in history uh he played the infamous character jason Voorhees in four of the friday the 13th movies and he is by far the greatest jason to ever hell yeah uh, to ever wear the mask i mean he is he was fantastic at it he made the character um but he was he was approached to do freddy versus jason and he was like, yeah, I'll, you know, send me a script. Let's do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, then next thing he knows, he finds out that they've hired somebody else to play Jason. And he was like, how do you how yeah. do you not, you know, take the most iconic Jason and have him, yeah. you know, it, it just didn't make a lot of sense. So it really, it really screwed with his head for a while, you know. But anyway, that comes out a lot in Holliston because they're, they, they were showing scenes where he's like, trying to kill himself because he got passed up for the <laughs> draw. You know, it's just a, a bunch of weird shit. But uh, yeah. I have not seen that show. I really want to check it out, though. Yeah, sweet, sweet, man. But, yeah, there's so many paranormal shows out there. And, yeah. And, and um, just shows about the dark side and light of life. And, yeah, and I wanted to, uh, you know, we wanted to do this just so we can kind of talk about some of our favorite shows and also to give you guys something you can look at if you, you know, Want your kids to watch some shows. There's a few in here they can watch. Yeah, you know, there's um, a few here that you shouldn't let them watch for sure. Um, but um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there that's worth catching. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of people have time to you know if you're sitting around at nighttime instead of sitting around doing nothing, you sit down and watch a good horror show. Yeah, some of these are available on TV. Most of them that we've talked about though are. Well, I don't want to say most of them, but a lot of them, you're only going to find them on the internet somewhere. Yeah, YouTube has a um, lot of stuff, Because they're old guys. enough that, you yeah. know. YouTube has a lot of stuff. You can watch a lot of things on YouTube. So don't let it, don't be too discouraged. You can get Even on, if you don't watch the whole series, I mean, at least go in and check out a couple episodes. Yeah. You know, it'll give you a, a different perspective on the kind of minds we have. Yeah. 
And I think uh, I think that's going to be it for today, guys, on this episode. Um, so hit us up on Facebook at Horror Chronicles Podcast. Hit us up on our email. Yeah, uh, Horror Chronicles Podcast at gmail.com. Send in your stuff, guys. Let us know what you want to hear. We'll tell your stories for you. You know what I mean? If you want to be anonymous, you can be anonymous. If not, we'll shout your name out to the world. Um we're going to be starting YouTube. Probably by the time you hear this episode, we're going to have yeah, a YouTube gonna, page. Yeah, we're going to launch a YouTube channel. And um, eventually, guys, we're, we're working on the whole video thing. So you guys yeah. will be able to see our beautiful faces on YouTube. Woo! So we're trying to branch out, guys. We really want to make this the best show for you guys that we can make it. And um, sorry if I sound like I'm a little down. I'm not down. I just got a little bit of a head cold. So He's down with the sickness. Down with a sickness. You know, so my freaking... My energy level is low. I'm trying to save it. I got to go to the gym after this. So, <laughs> Yeah, and that's going to be a long day for us. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to do. We've been doing a lot of things. So, But anyway, guys, we love you. Keep with us. Promise we're going to get better and better. Um, and until next time, everybody. Keep it creepy. <laughs>